Welcome to lecture 5. To start with D3JS, you first have to understand the basic elements of a plot or chart. First, we have a drawing canvas, which is the region in which we will draw the chart. Then we have axes, and these have labels, and ticks with labels, which are these lines with numbers. You can have a legend, which indicates what kind of data is, is depicted. We have the actual data points plotted in the chart. And we have data elements. These are further representations of the data. This can be, for instance, a line connecting the data points. But it could also be an area or something completely different. And we have annotations. For instance, the numbers below the data points. D3JS is a collection of helper functions which allows you to define all the elements of the chart and then to draw these elements in an SVG. To get a full introduction into D3, you can look at the website in the link given below. On that site, you will first learn what SVG is, which is basically a language very similar to HTML to describe complex shapes. In this case, it describes a circle. But it can also describe lines, rectangles, polygons, and more complex paths. If you follow this page, you will learn about the basic helper functions in creating, for instance, the axis. To give you some idea of the end result of a D3 graph, I show here the final result of the first visualization that we will make. If you open the inspector, we can see all the elements of the HTML page. In the graph element, you will now find an SVG element. This is our drawing canvas. We can open this to find a path inside, which is the area on the top. There is another path, which is the area on the bottom. Below that we find a G element, which is a grouping. In this case you will find that it is the horizontal axis. Within the horizontal axis we find a path, being at the axis itself, and several ticks. And for each tick there will be a line and a label. The same goes for the vertical axis, the one going above and below. Here we also find a text annotation attached to the final tick. Now you could write these elements yourself, just as you would do an HTML document. D3 has a lot of helper functions to create these elements more easily. 